Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. And today I'm be going over when to fight for a recruit or when it's time to just call it quits. So before we get into the video, as always, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on that noti bell, as always. And if you haven't already, give this video a big thumbs up. Every like goes a long way. You guys have been killing it. Can we get 250 likes on this video? And of course, comment down below if you have anything to add, as always. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out Underdog. If you use code Poodle down below, you'll see it in the comments and in the description. If you use code Poodle, you can get up to $1,000 on your first deposit, get a free 0.5 pick, and of course, enjoy the entire month of content. Underdog has been killing it almost every day as a promo, and it's plenty of specials and plenty of ways to win over there. So make sure you check it out. If you need any help, hit me up on Twitter or comment down below. So let's get into it. The way I see recruiting is there's a few phases that are super important. I'm not talking about top five, top three. I'm talking about key interest phases that you want to be focusing on. What I mean by that is I've basically broken this down into a pretty simple formula to know when I'm going to win or I'm not going to win. And my success rates, I would say about 80 to 90% at this point. And it goes a long way in helping me A, preserve points, B, preserve time and, and my mental health. So I don't go fighting for a recruit and then losing them at the end, which people say all the time, right? I see people all the time. I was leading all season. I ended up losing at the end. I hate this game. You will know if you're going to end up losing at the end based on a few of these phases. So you've got to be on the lookout and just really focusing at each phase. So the first phase is the offer scholarship phase. This is one of the first times you're going to get a good look at where you stand. Now, it's not really the most important phase, in my opinion, but it does play a, a vital role in knowing whether or not to continue going and where you're going to stand from there on out. And I'll get into that. So first, you're going to offer your scholarships. You can offer guys outside of your pipeline. You can offer guys in your pipeline. I want to make this clear. A lot of people say, oh, they're not in my pipeline. I'm not going to fight for them. Pipeline for me is really all about starting interest. It's like right here. This guy's from Florida, Hollywood, Florida. Obviously, Florida's near the top. FSU second. Miami's third. As you can see, pipeline typically just matters for starting interest. After that, it's all a points game. It's all a skill game. It's all a matter of packages and your recruiting tactics. That's really it, in my opinion. So do keep that in mind. Fight for whoever you want to fight for that you believe you can. And I'll go through these phases and I'll probably give you a better idea of when you can and can't fight for them. So once you do have this in mind, go forward after you offer your scholarships and advance the week this is phase one now i do want to break this down as we go through so keep keep note of all the phases because these are super important so this is phase one this is the first initial big interest boost phase as you see here florida takes a clear lead here they had the lead to begin with so this isn't really shocking same thing here we have not we moved up to one on this guy we were already one we just tightly stayed ahead but as you see we're pretty neck and neck with florida here and so on and so forth this is a great week to get a good gauge on where you are. If you see right here, this is a, a four or five star right here. We moved up slightly on this guy. We were a little behind. So that's good. That's good initially. But like I said, I'm never too concerned about this board. The only time I'd ever be concerned about this board is if a team gets a massive lead. Like for instance, let's say like, see that old Miss jump kind of freaks me out a little bit, but more so let's say I was competing against like Georgia and Bama and Georgia got one of those huge leads. Like not like that, like just one of those huge ones where everyone's at half and they're at almost complete for the top eight bar that's where i start to get concerned within this phase because then i'm like okay georgia already has a crazy starting interest and i know they have great coaching packages and i know they're a great program and i know they're five star that's where i get concerned see these are close enough to where none of these concern me i don't care that i'm fifth there's no situation here where i'm concerned so for that i continue going with this phase of recruits that's the only way i i ever look at this phase is did someone get a massive lead that's a great program See, if I have you, if you see, I've got a massive lead here, I wouldn't be concerned. I know they don't have the coaching staff most likely to keep up, but as a team like Georgia or Alabama or Michigan, if they had a huge lead out of this gate, like massive, I'd probably back out on that recruit because gaining ground is going to be very hard. At least that much ground, right? Otherwise we're good to go from here. So then the next phase comes and that's the initial offer phase. This phase is huge. Why is that? This is where you want to take a look at your points. And this is where you decide if you're going to continue to fight. So at this point, look at what points you have. So obviously I have 50 on cornerbacks, right? I have 60 on outside linebackers. The way I look at this phase is I look at my recruiting packages. You can go over to coaching packages and look at what you have and look at your points above my face cam. 50, 50, 60, 75, 50, 75. The way I look at this, if the competition's stiff or I'm kind of behind, I'm on players with only 50 points, I'm probably not going to go all in on them. Players with more than 50, I will fight. Players with 75, I'll fight anyone or 80 if I had that. So for instance, right here, we're a little behind. 
but we have 60. So I'm, I will go, I will continue fighting for this player because it's Auburn, it's Florida, it's Miami. We're not that far behind and we do have extra points. So let's hope that we get it. And another thing to keep in mind here is also when you do your recruiting packages, this is why I think elite recruiter is so important because you do get additional bonuses. So the points aren't exactly a one for one ratio. So let's say right here, I have elite recruiter. As you see, I have it on these players. I all have this, which is gain additional interest for every 10 hours spent. So let's say Florida only has the 60 points and I have 60 points, but I have elite recruiter 60 points, which means that I also get an additional six times bonus. Now it's not a six times in the sense that you get six times more benefit, but for every 10, I get a slight bonus. So I get six extra bonuses. So my 60 may be more, me be more impactful than theirs. So as long as I have these elite recruiter packages, I'm willing to fight at 60, potentially even 50, but 50 is really cutting it close because you want, you want more hours. You always want the more you always want more hours so always make sure you take care of that and of course as you do progress through seasons you can be upgrading your elite recruiter package but let's keep going down so again all these guys are 50 right here i take a look at this guy i'm near the top i only have 50 i'd probably still fight because i know i have the elite recruiter packages and honestly i'm near the top not concerned same thing i'm going against really bad programs here not concerned that it's 50. keep going down so let's say for right here 75 we have the lead this is a clear i think we'll get this one we're shooting for this one not concerned in the slightest so this guy 75 is a guy I fight for for sure. And let's just give us a few more examples here. 75, huge lead. Again, and this shows with the starting interest with the pipeline and how that works. I think when you have the pipeline, it's much easier to get that initial interest boost. Right here, another guy. Anyone with 75, I'm fighting for. So I want to give a better example in terms of like this guy. Let's say I was right here all the way on five or I was this guy behind on Clemson or this one right here. If I had 75 points on this one, I would 100% do it. Honestly, if you were LSU, I'd still go in. If you were behind LSU, you weren't even on the screen. With 75, I'd still do it. But with 50 is where I'm going to have to say, this one's going to be pretty tough. I don't know if I'm going to stay in this one, honestly. This is one where I'll throw maybe the initial week's 50, but I don't think I'd stay on this one. Clemson got a big boost. Ole Miss got a boost. Auburn got a boost. I'm behind and I only have 50. I don't think I'm going to catch these teams. Could you? Yes. But remember, for every 50 you just throw at people, it's opportunity cost. For the 50 you throw at this guy, just in case for a four-star player you're losing out on another player that you maybe easily could get and that's how you end up instead of a recruiting class of 15 to 20 that's how you end up with one of seven when you just start tossing your the whole 50 is a whole hard sell it's a whole full send the house right that's a whole prospect when you do the 50 you're just wasting it so again that's a guy i'd probably be out on this one you're going against great programs you only have 50 the odds of beating out alabama georgia florida and fsu are pretty low here especially with only 50 could you yes He's a five star. Maybe you stay in, but I just don't think you're going to end up beating all of them out. You can try it. Another thing you can do, which is helpful, especially in year one, if it's online or it's offline, you can always go and check. You can make fake offline franchises and create that program using their custom coach and then just go and check their packages. And you can see maybe Georgia only has defensive ones to start, which is true. They don't have quarterback probably. That's good. So you're not really too worried about them, but they're still Georgia. Bama has some quarterback ones potentially. Okay. That's a tough one. Florida does too. So does FSU. All right. That's going to be tough, right? That's another guy that maybe I don't waste my 50 on and so on and so forth. So you're going to want to go ahead and just apply all your points for the sake of this. I'll throw it on there. But like I said, you want to be, this phase is super important to really gauge based on your packages. Once you've assessed your packages, remember nothing changes. And I feel like people forget that. So the next few weeks, you're going to get the same bonus every week from your packages. Once you apply, send the house on these guys, right? Understand that that's not changing. And what I mean by that, and I'll show you this at advance, is that you're going to get a set amount of accrual each week, and that's it. Sometimes people will be behind. They'll be throwing 50 at a player, and they'll be behind, and they'll say, okay, well, maybe next week, maybe next week. No, if you're not getting ahead incrementally, and you'll see what I mean at this next advance, it, you're not going to get ahead. And that's where it's important to understand when to throw in the towel and understand phases. So again, phase one is the initial recruit interest phase. That initial interest you get when you when you give them a scholarship phase two that's super important and this is the one where i really start to make some cuts is this one right here this is when you know how your coaching packages stack up against other people this is when you really get a feel for whether or not you have any chance at all and i'll show you what i mean right here not to say there aren't lottery tickets but see right here on this guy with auburn and fsu it was close but we had 60 remember and we had the bonuses for each 10. So what this tells me is Auburn and FSU and Florida did not have the bonuses for outside linebacker. They must have offensive packages because we didn't just get 60 on them. We also got those incremental bonuses. This tells me full steam ahead, full steam ahead, full steam ahead. Same again, we're going against computers. So do keep that in mind. 75 points killed these guys, killed these guys. So unfortunately, computers suck at recruiting, but 
this tells you a few things here and i do want to go through this because remember this is very applicable to online leagues this is an offline league computers suck at recruiting in my opinion but this is where i want to this is where i want to show you using other teams here so let's say you were in this race right here for this five star there's no reason you should be winning this right now against these teams like i said computers are not great at recruiting so keep this in mind but let's say you were georgia in the situation and miami jumped you but you're saying oh i'm georgia i'll be fine in my opinion if you take a look what i like to do here is now honestly i use items or rulers to get scale if you hold up a ruler up to the georgia interest bar that clearer one you can see that let's say it gained about an inch but miami gained 1.5 inches i always look at that because that's your interest gain for the points you're spending you're going to probably just keep accruing in that kind of interval so that that gap between georgia's interest and my interest is probably what i'll keep maintaining as long as we're doing nothing different so that tells me alone if you're nebraska get out the race you're not accruing enough per week to beat me now there are instances in the next few phases i will talk about where you can change the game but remember you still have to stay in the top five and three to still beat me or change the game in that sense right so understanding that that's a great way to call it quits so if there was a recruit here that anyone beat me on like i said cpus is tough but like right here florida should get out of this race alabama should get out of this race they're not going to win they're not going to win based on interest now again you can change this but this here's where the next phase gets trickier so these first two are guaranteed scholarship and apply your points nothing else you can do there the next thing here the next phase that's going to come up is the first week you can hard sell the first possible week so what i mean by the first possible week is right that's when you get to top five so this guy right here this technically this guy can be hard sold as of this week at top five now here's the thing here's where it comes down to luck and this is where you have to be kind of vigilant with this so right now we're clearly beating florida here right so i'm gonna sort by top five so you can just see who we have we're clearly beating florida we should be safe but let's say for instance i go to hard sell and this is the next key phase hard selling is a huge boost and the person who gets the hard sell first i'm talking like a week ahead of everyone is most likely to win a recruit because they're going to get a massive jump and then you may say well i'll get mine next week yeah but they'll do it again so same thing with the incremental boost i was talking about with the first set of like you got 1.5 and they got one inch if they get the hard sell they're then going to go to three inches and you're going to be at two even if you get yours next week i'll keep accruing at that same level so that big jump i got for that hard sell i'll keep accruing something similar to that going forward so you're you're cooked at that point so let's say i go to hard sell using process of elimination we're going to go through their proximity to home is their deal breaker and we have coach prestige so we have two of the greens here so keep in mind that we can technically hard sell this week so we're going to go through and look see if we can do it uh right there that's one possibility and if we keep moving through that's another possibility so there's two possibilities so here here you cannot automatically hard sell so do keep that in mind so you have two options you tell yourself i have a safe lead on florida i'm fine why risk it i'm just gonna go with another week of 50 and i'll just wait on the other hand and i've seen this in my league and florida could have two things here they could have got super lucky and with their two weeks that we've advanced gotten two of the three greens plus proximity could have three greens already could have three greens and that's like, it's not like everyone gets the same amount of things unlocked you get random boxes unlocked so that's where the next variability phase comes into recruiting phases is that florida could have three greens right now and you could have only one plus the one deal breaker and they could hard sell this week so you have to keep that in mind when you have a lead on a recruit like is it worth it i've actually had a lead like this with a five star and said i'll be fine i'm gonna play it safe let them guess the other opponent guessed the hard sell correctly a week ahead of me and then they jumped me in this week by a decent amount and i was pissed because that was my guy and but you have to understand now you're gonna say oh, okay well that's fine i had a big lead before once i hard sell you're fine no because now that they have the lead on me based on their hard sell let's say this is like the gap we have now every week we hard sell we're just gonna keep ending up at that gap so understanding that once you lose on that hard sell week you're basically cooked from a package perspective there is one last thing you can do at that point so i do want to just i'll, I'll say that for a minute but remember initial interest scouting week scholarship week is the first week where you get an idea of where you're going to stand that first week of actually putting packages on is where you can see incrementally where you're going to keep growing up until hard sell week which lets you know whether or not you have a chance package wise and i keep saying package wise you want to be so careful and vigilant of looking at what your packages are and understanding what your power as a recruiter is because if you're not a recruiting coach you're not going to out recruit anybody you're going to have to kind of weed around and look for prospects that are unrecruited people that are under recruited people that are kind of like sneaky gems if you have good recruiting packages you can take who you want for the most part and fight for them so you have to understand that that you're going to keep losing out to packages all the time so right here at the hard sell week like i said if florida gets it wrong and they or they play it safe you're winning this recruit 
if they do guess it right so understand it's like a one in three chance right they they could either they could guess it which is two options or they could play it safe so like there's like a one in third chance that they do something that could possibly beat you but if i'm florida i'm guessing it i'm clearly going to lose based on packages so you have to assume that they're probably guessing especially in the online league a few times i was like they're not going to guess it almost every time they've guessed it and it makes sense because if they don't guess here they're losing because next week i'm 100 percent hard selling and next week after, as of that it's over once i get my hard sell in i'm winning this recruit most likely with this kind of lead so they're going to guess and if they take a lead here you're screwed so now we get to the next phase here right we're gonna go to the next phase at which point where most players get into the top five and we're hard selling right i went through it with that one there is a one more phase here that is i think the ultimate wild card if done correctly and that's going to be visits visits are your last saving grace so let me go back to that recruit i was talking about the five star let's say in this instance uh florida florida guessed correctly right maybe they didn't Wh whatever the case is let's say right here george is behind george is behind on this guy they could either stay in the race but if you see right here this is an instance where i've seen what my five star and what's happened or let's say the 75 guy going through and kind of just looking at all these as you see we have a clearly like i said the cpu sucks at recruiting but the the concept stands let's say right here on this five star georgia is clearly not gaining me on interest they're clearly not going to win this i'm out gaining them per week and this is after let's say a hard sell right i'm out gaining them on interest at this point so at this point all these teams probably should drop out it's over but they can still do a visit so there are a few things to keep in mind here where do visits impact you with miami i have i happen to be fortunate enough to have as you see here multiple teams that i could choose and that's important to note because i have three five seven nine so i'm in a great position here's where you can get screwed at the visit week and this is why the visit i made i made another video going over this i'm gonna make a video going over when's the best time to schedule them visits are so variable because there's so many different ways they can kill you and people say oh visits are a waste of time they can be if you do them wrong but if you do them correctly here i could lose all of these recruits so this is why at this point you want to be doing like what i call is like visit strategy and kind of mapping out weeks so what i would do in this situation is looking at this recruit i clearly have georgia and bama beat i think i'm gonna win this but i'm gonna start calculating when i think they'll when i think they'll recruit okay so let's say let's say we're in week three here or week two I would say this guy probably by week three with the hard sell we're at the top three just about we probably have three more weeks so they won't recruit they won't accept in week three week four this guy probably commits in week five so i would go take a look at my visits okay i can't do a visit in week three but i can do one in week five and that's the week he will commit right so not going into week three not going into week four it'd probably be the week five advance so week five would be the last possible week to put a visit on him and it would probably secure it so with that being said i'd probably go do this remember you can only do it on home games so i'd probably go over to team schedules and i go check the schedule and this is what i actually do i go over and go check out georgia as the most likely guy that could actually compete here go check out georgia see who they are playing so georgia weeks three is at by and at awesome jo georgia can't schedule a game outside of their bye week i don't think a bye week visit will be strong enough to beat me so the, here's the next thing with this right there's so much to go into this i don't want to make this video all about visits but bi-week visits are what i call like safe little chunk gains like you'll get like a good a decent chunk you'll get a decent chunk especially if you can do complimentary boost and if you have coaching packages but it won't outright when you recruit these are like safe leads so for me as a team with a lead right now with a lead like that i probably will be fine doing a bi-week one because i just need a little chunk to give me an extra lead to make sure their visit can't kill me but for georgia to win this they're going to need a home game visit against a team like bama like kentucky they're going to need a game against a decent team so for that reason i think george is out of contention here i don't think they have a chance to win this so i'm not concerned and that's how you get to know if you should save or waste your visit your visits right now bama bama plays georgia at home week five they play wisconsin at home week three these are two games where i could say if they won either of these games they could possibly catch back up i think wisconsin catches them back up a win at georgia would beat me so this is a situation right do i think bama beats georgia it's tough it depends on your league it depends who owns what team but this is a situation where i probably look at this and i go there's a five-star recruit i don't want to lose him i probably go in and i schedule a visit for week five now you're going to say it's only virginia tech why that locks the other team out remember only one visit could be applied in a certain week so if i put my week five visit on virginia tech right here i lock bama out from that georgia game 
I only give them the week three, and I'm pretty sure we're in week three, which means they can't do week three, which basically means I lock Georgia and Bama into only doing bye week visits. And I don't think bye week visits will be enough to top me, especially with how I'm outgaining them. Because even if their bye week visit gets them back up to me, as you see, like I said, where you measure the bar, we're out recruiting them each week. So with that being said, even if their bye week visit ties me right at advance, I'll start incrementally gaining on them. So I'm not concerned about a bye week visit. What I can't have, absolutely can't have, is Georgia or Bama beating each other in a crazy four-star influence type bonus for winning and then jump me by like a whole inch. And now I only have two weeks left, right? Because if this was week one, it's fine. I'll catch back up. We only have two to three weeks left before they commit. So I'd have to outgain them with my little, with my, let's say quarter inch through three weeks to get back the inch. So that's where I can say if the Georgia or Bama got in a visit like that in week three and they jumped me by an inch, I'm probably cooked on this guy. So with that being said, in this situation, I'm probably scheduling it for week five. I'm locking them out. Now let's go look at another example real quick. This situation right here, a lead like this, I don't care if they have a visit. I, it doesn't matter unless they're beating like Georgia. Even then, I don't think it matters. This situation, I don't care if anyone else has a visit, not applying it. Don't waste your 40 year. I see people do this all the time. They'll waste a 40 visit on week three here just to make sure they get some extra points. You're winning this. You're against, you're going against bad programs. Not concerned. Now, a situation where I'd be slightly concerned, again, this one, not overly concerned. Auburn with a great visit could almost catch up to you, but I'm not overly concerned. This is one where I play it by ear. I just keep looking and see if they do apply a visit. That's the other thing is also just counter visiting. So let's say right here, I have a lead and I'm out gaining Ole Miss. I'm not concerned about a visit at this point. I'd probably advance another week and see where we're at. Remember, remember I can only do week three, five or seven, or I think six with a buy. So I'm not concerned about a visit. I still have time to wait. I'm not going to waste my point yet. I probably advance the week. If, and I'm going to keep growing on Ole Miss, as you see by the incremental gain we have on the shade. But if I see Ole Miss apply a visit for like week five, I'd probably be a little concerned. And at which point I'd apply a visit for week six. So I also like to counter visit. Those are where I really do visits. It's situations like this. Lock him out of this, lock these guys out. That's one. Or if, if Ole Miss is like right behind me and I see them do a visit, I can't take that risk of them having a good visit. I'll apply one too. That way I get my boost with their boost and I match their boost. And the other time I do a visit, which you can't see, like I said, because the CPU sucks at recruiting is if let's say I was fighting for a five star and I'm Bama right now, Bama obviously is going to be beat by me. But if I can, if I can have that Bama versus Georgia week five schedule for a visit and I win as Bama, I'm jumping Miami here. So this is a situation again, where I probably try to lock him out. But remember this all comes with risk as well. And you're gonna have to spend points and not every user is going to play that game. So keep, that's probably where I do it. I'll do it if I'm behind, but I know we're three, two weeks away from a commit and that visit will jump them. I'll do it if it's to lock them out. And I'll do it if I just want an incremental bye week bonus. Like again, I have this lead right here. Uh, let's say this lead right here. Let's say I was going against Georgia, Bama, and Texas, and I have this pretty safe lead, and it's a five star. And I don't want to play around. That's the other thing. Even with five stars, you don't want to play around. I'm fine losing a three, four, or four star prospect to ensure you get your five star because those are the big, those are the big ticket guys. Four stars, you can come and get them after. So that's where I'd probably put a bye week visit on. But that pretty much wraps up the phases. Once your visits are through and your heart cells are through, just understand where you stand is where you stand. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say, let's say you've done bye weeks, you've done visits, right? Let's say this situation right here, you, all teams have done their visits already. All teams have done their hard sell weeks already. At this point, you're just riding out the point wave. If you're South Carolina or Florida, get out of the race. It doesn't matter. Even if, if you look at South Carolina, they are actually slightly outgaining us here. So this is a situation where you might want to measure it, but keep in mind, we're three weeks away from a commit. So let me just actually correct this for a second. This is a situation where I would actually kind of calculate it. So Miami's actually losing to South Carolina by a slight bit here, a very slight bit. But I don't think that slight bit is enough to outpace me over the next three advances. Because if you look at it, they're probably beating us by a grand total of about like a quarter inch, maybe less. I don't think this guy will probably commit in the next two to three advances. I don't think that if we advance two to three times, all things being the same, that they'll actually outbeat us on this guy. So for that reason, South Carolina might think they're in, but they're probably out. Florida, again, they should just get out of that race. They're not outgrowing us interest-wise. Hard sell's done. Now, in this, now let's say there were still visits left. South Carolina and Florida could still potentially win this, in which case you got to be vigilant and still watch this race. But that's why it's important. So remember, the phases are the initial interest phase on scholarship week. Then there's that initial first time you ever hit them with the package, your actions, and see what your points and packages do to impact the player to count the interest. The next one's that hard sell. Once you hard sell, you're going to get a pretty good idea of where you stand. Pretty much after the hard sell, it's full steam ahead and you know where you're going to go. Visits are the only thing that can kind of save you, but you understand where you're going. Even with a, even with that visit, the visit's kind of like a wild card, trap card, Yu-Gi-Oh type thing. 
even with that, you understand like, okay, everyone is hard sold already. Early hard sells are out of the way. I'm out gaining this guy. I could win. I'm out gaining this guy, but there's only two weeks left. I won't out gain enough to make up for the interest that he has, or I'm not out gaining this guy. They're going to jump me, or I'm not out gaining this guy and I'm behind them. It's over. And in all those situations, you can look at visits and see how they could fix that situation. That's how I see business as like the band-aid. How could you fix a situation that, or how could you fix or save a situation, right? That's how I see it. So keep that in mind. After all that's done, that's when it's time to really get out. Like I've seen people, I've seen people wearing week four and it looks like this. Visit hard sells are all through and we're just gonna probably coast this. That interest I'm gaining versus them, we're gonna coast this. And we're only in the, we're not even in the top five yet, right? So let's say if this was already in the top five too and we did the hard sells and visits, we're probably looking at another three weeks from this point if we were in the top five already, maybe four of just Auburn, FSU, Florida, Alabama, just wasting points when they're not gonna win this, right? If all things are done. But that's what I hope this did help you. If you have any questions about phases or how to kind of understand when you're winning a recruit or if you're gonna win the recruit, comment down below, hit me up on Twitter. I'll be more than happy to help you out with that. If you haven't already, give this video a big thumbs up. Can we get 250 likes? Subscribe if you're new, turn on that noti bell. And if you haven't already, check out Underdog. My code will get you up to 1,000 on your first deposit. It's a great place to play. I love Underdog. Make sure to check out the content schedule. I would have posted it earlier in the video and you can also see it over on Twitter. If you have any questions, let me know. It's been super fun. They have new promos every day. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.